What do we got here, Mr. So, Mike? so big. Basically, we will, we normally use an all main emu suspension because it's well proven. It has a good footprint around the world for supplying product and good support. And they do a number of different shock absorbers. They do the Nitrous Sport shock absorbers. They do a BP51 isn't shock. That, isn't that the holy grail of, of off-road shocks? It's one of the shocks. I mean, there are other companies like Terrain Tema who've got an equally good shock absorber. Okay, so I don't like to say one's better than the other. It's going to depend on your pocket, exactly. how you're going to use it, are you going to take the time to adjust them and mm -hmm. make get the use of And up. having adjustable ride height, the pros and... Or the, uh, adjustable the pros. dampening. So yeah. the shock absorber won't change the ride height, it'll change the dampening, the yeah. rebound and then the dampening of the shock uh, against the spring. So it does help, absolutely. When you take a truck like this and you adjust the tire pressures <coughs> and you can tune the shock absorbers for the dampening and rebound, you're really looking to attain a very comfortable drive yeah. with the maximum amount of control on bad roads. Exactly. You don't want the car bouncing everywhere and the steering is flying out your hands and you haven't got good control of the car. So you lower the tire pressures. When you're lowering tire pressures, you've got to manage the heat buildup in any yeah. tire. So you're going you to limit your speed. Do you have heat monitors on your tires? So you'll see we have a tire monitor in this vehicle and little, little um, sensors um, in the tires. So they'll manage heat and tire pressure, which is a great safety feature because heat is one of the critical build-ups. You know, you lower tire pressures, the tire's flexing a lot more, you can quickly build up to a point where you can burst a tire, yeah. and that's critical. So, you know, you want to at all costs avoid tire damage, because for one, you've only got two spares, yeah. and secondly, you've got to manage the safety of it. Hmm. How do we do that? By making sure we understand the tire pressures for the different conditions that we're going to use. What's my tire road pressure? How do I check the tires? looking at the shape of the tire just to see the actual sidewall shape okay if i come back and it's much softer it's going to tell me that this tire's got a lot less air than in that it should have maybe it's gone too low okay tire monitors actually these are screwed onto the valves so you get two different types of tire monitors so i really do embrace having as much safety as possible tires we never compromise on tires exactly. it's just a critical safety element and you got the, the alloys on here? Look, it's a choice. Um, these these are great, they're lovely looking wheels, okay? Um, as long as you, you've got two spare wheels and you realize that if you had to fix this with tire levers, it could do some damage, okay? These balance nicely, they run much more true. Then a 16, um, you'd say? Then no, then, then actually a, um, a steel room. Okay. okay, so the alloys actually get a smoother ride on them. Well, you do because they, they're made much more perfectly than a steel room, so you can balance them up better. The disadvantage to an alloy is that you, if you had to repair it in the bush with tire levers, you can do damage to the rim. Yeah. But you've got two spares. But so if, if you've got a plank of wood, you can still bash the alloy a bit. To a certain uh, I would never bash an alloy because an alloy is not a metal that will straighten easily. Yeah. If, you, if you try and straighten an alloy and it fractures, you could, uh, you know, once, once you've done damage to a rim like that, Take it off the vehicle and don't use it. You know, this is not like a steel room where you can bash it straight again. So when you've hit an alloy and it's fractured, or it's, don't use it. Okay, you, an alloy will fracture, and if an alloy fractures, then you've got real problems. So tires. I mean, if you look after your rims and tires, they'll look after you. That's simple as that. And you got the two eight five by seventy on a seventeen. What's the difference between that and a two eight five by seventy five on a sixteen? So 285 with 70 profile. I mean the same size, but I mean, does it make a difference having the 16 versus the 17 in terms of, of that extra bit of, it, bit of air? It, it does give you a little bit more ground clearance, okay? You also, when you change it, when you take a tire, which is maybe not as common, you've got to be mindful of getting spare tires. Yeah. So if you're going to do a long trip for, let's say, drive through Africa, I try and stick to a, a steel room and a tire that's as much common as possible. So even a 285, 75, 16, yeah. 16 inch being the size. And it, it's size. a beautiful looking tire, that. Oh, fantastic. And you've got the gas shocks here. How do, the, the evolution in shock technology is massive over the last couple of... Look, I think shock technology has always been there in, in years gone past. It hasn't always been embraced by the four-wheel drive industry. It's expensive. Yeah. You know, shock absorbers like this are not cheap to buy and fit. Yeah. So when you make the investment, you're making it for a reason because you want to have the adjustment, you want to have the ability to yeah. use it. So that's key. Do you have any experience with the Fox Shocks? Or did they yeah, put them on, the, on the Ranger Raptor? You know, Fox Shocks are, are a very good brand. They've got a very good name. 
we don't have the same footprint for Fox Shocks as you do for All My Name You. So yeah. when I'm looking at equipment, it's not because other sh other manufacturers aren't good. Mm. It's because of the footprint they have. You know, does can we get All My Name You in Namibia? Yes. Can we mm. get it further north? You know, and that's what you're looking at. It, other shocks are capable of doing that, and exactly. you can sometimes get better than what we've got yeah. here, a lot better. But it's when it goes wrong, can you get the support? But you can really notice a, a high-level, expensive shock. It just rides so much uh, better. Yeah, oh, look, it does. You know, a suspension setup's key to, to any vehicle, and that takes time. When you drive your vehicle enough, and you get to know it, you really get a feel for the vehicle, and you know, it becomes part of you. And you play with the shock absorber settings. And, and you become, become part of it. You become part of it. <laughs>